Precious Father, we are grateful unto you for this day that you have made. We thank you for your word that comes to us in a very rich and gracious way. We have come, Lord, that you will help us to be our best as we continue in this Christian journey so that by the grace of God, we will live for you all the rest of the days of our lives. Bless us as we share together right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I welcome you to the worship service today in Jesus' name. We are going to be looking at the word of God on the subject of consecration. So I talk on the consecrated believer. The consecrated believer. When we talk about consecration, we need to understand what that word depicts, what it means, what it stands for. Consecration is all about holiness. Consecration is about sacredness. Consecration is about sanctification. It is about being blessed. And we talk about believers, of course, we all know what that uh, is all about. That to be a believer is to be saved. To be a believer is to be born again. And every believer enjoys a new identity and a new sense of who they are in Christ Jesus. Understand the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Uh, what does it say in your Bible? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. It says, behold... All things are become new. That then means when you are in Christ Jesus, you are set apart from the world unto the Lord. When you are in Christ Jesus, you are dedicated to the cause of Christ and the purpose of God all the rest of the days of your life. When you are born again, then you have a new relationship with the Lord God of heaven. And then you have the status of a child of God living in the newness of life with a new mind. Newness of life with a new thinking newness of life with a new way with a new reasoning and with a new way of acting in your behavior in your relationship with other people in everything that you do you walk in faith we are told in the book of romans chapter 6 verse 4 where the bible says that therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death that then means that when you are a believer you are dead to sin. You are not dead in sin. You are dead to sin. You are alive in Christ Jesus and you are buried by baptism unto death. It means you are completely dead to sin. And he went further to say that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also shall walk in the newness of life. So again, you see that as a believer, it is mandated that we walk to God's glory in the newness of life in everything that we do all the rest of the days of our life and then we consecrate we set apart ourselves unto God the word consecration also means to be set apart at conversion every believer is already set apart John chapter 1 verse 12 as many as she said him, to them, God gave the power to become the sons of God. So by that alone, you are no longer a child of the devil. You are a child of God. You are set aside and set apart for God and for his glory alone. First John chapter 3, verse 10 tells us that in this, the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil also. So then we see again, if you are set apart for God, you are a child of God. If you are not set apart for God, you are a child of the devil. We understand that every believer then being set apart for God is a saint. You know, unfortunately, there are people that think 
in order to be uh, reckoned with as a saint or recognized as a saint, uh, you must be dead and then be specially uh, honored like they do in some denominations or some uh, religious environment. No. Understand that you, in order for you to be a saint, you must still be alive. If you are not a saint while living, you cannot be a saint while dead. Am I communicating? You cannot be a saint. The word saint is actually derived, derived from a Latin word, sanctus, meaning sacred. And then it is trans translated from the Greek word, hagios, and then which literally means holy one. And so, whether you use the word sacred or you use the word holy, we are talking about the same thing. And that means to be sanctified, to be set apart for a holy use or a sacred use. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And uh, when you look again into that, uh, the Greek word, the root of uh, that uh, word, Hagios is saying uniquely belonging to God uniquely belonging to God. And that's why Deuteronomy chapter 7 tells us in verse 6 of it, For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. That will be your portion in Jesus' name. First Peter chapter 2 Verses 9 and 10 says, But ye are a choosing generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praise of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Can you see how special you are in the sight of the Lord and how or why you must make sure that you are set apart for God's glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Acts of the Apostles chapter 9, verses, uh, verses 13 and 32. Uh, Let's just look at verse 13. And then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he had done to thy saints at Jerusalem. So you see it there that saints are still living. Again, if you are not a saint while you are living, you cannot be canonized to become a saint after you are dead. You cannot be referred as a saint or accorded the term or the language or the title of a saint after you are dead. Colossians chapter 1 verse 2. To the saints and faithful brethren in Christ which are Colossae, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So we see it again and again that term that word is being used for people that are saved, for people that are redeemed of the Lord, for people that are washed clean from their sin, for people that are separated from the world and the allotment of the world and the attractions of the world and the sinfulness of the world unto the light of the Lord, the holiness of God and the power of God. So then the saints are expected to be holy. If you say you are a child of God, if you say you are a saint, then you are expected to be holy because we are exhorted to be holy. Colossians chapter 3. We look at the, the first six verses there. Colossians chapter 3. It says, if you then be risen with Christ, if you then have given your life unto Christ, if you then say you are crucified with Christ, if you then that you are, if you then say that you have repented of your sins and come to the Lord, if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Your attention is above. Your focus is above. Your desire is above. Your expectation is above. We are Christ seated on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory, mortified. Therefore, your member which are upon the earth, 
fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God comment on who? The children of disobedience. The children of disobedience, the wrath of God will not come upon us in Jesus' name. So if we must be consistent in our walk with the Lord, we must then be separated unto God. If we must be consistent in our relationship with God, then we must be sanctified unto the Lord. If we want to be consistent in our service unto the Lord, then we must make sure that every day of our life, God is number one. And he will be number one in Jesus' name. That's why uh, the Apostle Paul tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. He said, for this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication, that you should abstain from sin, that you should abstain from anything that is ungodly, anything that is unrighteous. If you must be a child of God, he's telling us them, that is not enough to come to church. That is not, it's not enough to say, I read the Bible. And you know, this year we are saying by the grace of God, we want to read the Bible collectively, corporately, uh, congregationally, the whole Bible for the whole year, Genesis to Revelation. And I, be, and I hope you are doing that on your own part. And I've heard of people that are saying, Pastor, uh, thank you for whoever that uh, came up with this idea. It is helping me. It is helping my family. And... Uh, but I need to tell you, it's not enough for you to read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation without obeying the Bible, without doing the will of God, without following the, 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 the direction of the Holy Spirit in your life. And so you must be holy. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Now, you come to church. And then you say, I'm a man of prayer. You've been told Friday we come in for night vigil. And then we have prayer line over there. We have pastor's prayer meeting. We have pastor's wife's prayer meeting. We have all this prayer, prayer going on. If you pray till the kingdom come without holiness, you will miss heaven. So understand that it's not just about religious ritual no it is about holiness and righteousness purity and uprightness ephesians chapter 1 verse 4 ephesians chapter 1 according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love holy holy in everything without blame before him before him through conversion then must uh, to God must entail our growing in holiness. Our increasing in holiness. Which I will also say increasing in grace. Every day of your life you are getting better. By and by. And then the things of the world are becoming like toys unto you. All, all to Jesus I consecrate anew. He is my portion forever. Jesus becomes your portion in anything and everything that you do. Leviticus chapter 11. Leviticus chapter 11 verses 44 and 45. For I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves and ye shall be holy. It will happen. In your life it will happen. In your family it will happen. For I am holy. Ye shall be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall ye defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. Ye shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. I am holy. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. The Lord will prepare us for heaven. The purity and the righteousness and the holiness of God will abide within our heart and soul in Jesus' name. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, verse 32. Acts, chapter 20, verse 32. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. You'll be built up. And to give you an inheritance 
among all them which are sanctified. Which are sanctified. So then, as we talk about this consecration, what is it about? In summary, it is separation from sin and its addiction. Consecration is separation from sin and its addiction. Consecration is freedom from selfish allurement and indulgences. Freedom from selfish allurement and its and indulgences. Number three, it is freedom from societal pressure and attraction. Consecration. You are free, you are set aside from all of those things. It is also freedom or separation from satanic influences and pressure. Satanic influences and pressure. It is also uh, freedom or separation from social strategies and corruptions. The corruptions of the world, the strategies of the world, the styles of the world, the pattern and the mode of doing things in the world, the languages of the world, uh, the business life of the world, uh, and uh, it is separation from every dogma of Satan and uh, separation unto the Lord, unto the Lord, unto his word, unto the word of God. We look at three things together. Why consecration? Reasons for consecration. Reasons for consecration. Number two, resources for consecration and then result of consecration. Why do we have to consecrate ourselves unto the Lord? Again, understand consecration means separation. Consecration means being set apart. Consecration means sanctification. Consecration means holiness and purity. And we are told in John chapter 17, verse 17, that we should, uh, that God should sanctify us. This is the prayer of Jesus now. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Thy word is truth. So we need consecration because without it, we will not be able to live in the truth. We'll not be able to walk in the truth. We'll not be able to live for God and his glory. And if you, if you, if you have been a member of Deeper Life for a long time, you know our number one song in Deeper Life. What's that number one song in Deeper Life? I can't hear you. Okay, Jesus only. Jesus only. I'm glad you know it. Jesus only. He's our savior. He's our sanctifier. Is our healer. And you want to be sure that Jesus is everything in your life and he is our coming king and Jesus will be there for us in Jesus' name. When we talk about consecration, it means we are ensuring that the nature of sin is no more part of it. It is uprooted completely because now we are consecrated unto holiness and to righteous uh, living. It is also to separate us from the world of sin unto perpetual godly living. John chapter 15 verse 19 says, If ye are aware of the world, the world will love its own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. Can you see? I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. Pay attention here. If in your life, and the things you do, and the way you do them, you are loved by the world, accepted by the world, and uh, the world is in you, and you are there, more than likely, you are not in the Lord. You are not of the Lord. You are not for the Lord. And the Lord will help you to come back to God in Jesus' name. Why do we have to get consecrated? It helps us to love the Lord our God with all our heart. Without consecration, there, understand again that there are things of the world that will be pulling you. The world is pulling from this end and the Lord is pulling from this end. But when you deliver yourself, you draw the line and then you tilt yourself, you lay yourself on the path of the Lord, then you will be able to love the Lord with everything that you have. Then 
Your money will be gone to God, will belong to God, your body will belong unto God, your property will belong unto God, your time will belong unto God, your treasure will belong unto God. Your, everything you have belongs unto God when you are fully, wholly, completely consecrated. Luke chapter 10, verse 27. Luke 10, 27. And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. That means, if you're a consecrated man in holiness and righteousness, in purity and uprightness, you will not want to hurt your neighbor. You wouldn't want to do any evil against your neighbor, and then consecration helps you to be holy unto God and God alone. That then means everything about you is dedicated. When we talk about consecration, we're talking about dedication. Everything is dedicated unto God, and you live for Him and you live for His glory. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 26. Leviticus. Chapter 20, verse 26. And ye shall be holy, not unto yourself, not unto any other thing, but unto me. This is God speaking. For I, the, the Lord, I am holy and have severed you, separated you, set you apart from all the people that ye should be mine. Pay attention here. You are a special person. You are a separated person. You are a unique person. And uh, God himself has set you apart, has separated you, and will bless you abundantly in Jesus' name. And because you are separated unto the Lord, you love the things of the Lord alone. You appreciate the things of the Lord alone. You, you favor the things of the Lord alone. As a matter of fact, he tells us in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, he says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And so, you love the Lord alone with all your heart, with all your life, and everything that you have, not that alone. As you love the Lord, you live for God, you serve the Lord, you follow the Lord, and then you are not in any way, whether on your job, in the church, in the family, in your town, on the street, in your community, you have nothing to do with any work of darkness, any work of unrighteousness, and you are totally separated from them. Second Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. I look at it from verse 14. And as we look at that verse 14, we are going to go all the way to verse 18. And then you see what instruction God is giving you there in verse 17. 2 Corinthians, what chapter? Chapter 6 and what verse? Verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? Can you see separation them? Can you see consecration them? And what concord that Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement at the temple of God with idol? For ye, who is the ye there? Who is the ye there? Ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Verse 17. Everybody read verse 17. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, see the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And when you receive us, verse 18 says, what will happen? And will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. So then, you understand that you love the Lord, and then you are separated from the world. You are separated from anything and everything that is not of God in your life, and the Lord will accept you in Jesus' name. Why do we need consecration? We need it because it is a command from God. 
We are commanded to be separated by the Lord. And that is why God himself said that he has severed us. He has separated us from other people. Understand? If you're a child of God, you don't compete with the people of the world. Because you're a different person. And you are for different species. When you are a child of God, you don't imitate the things of the world, the practices of the world, the behaviors of the world. As long as you are doing all those, it will not be easy for you to be consistent in your prayer life, consistent in your devotional life, consistent in your Bible study, consistent in righteousness and holiness, because all these things of the world will be influencing you. Show me your friends. Somebody help me here. And I will tell you who you are. When you are there at the nurse's station, how are you? Do they know you to be different from others? When you are there on your job, do they know you to be different from other people? When you are there at school as a student, do they know you to be different from other people? In the class where you take those courses, do they know you to be different from other people? When you go to take that examination, do they know you to be different from other people? The Lord is saying that come out from among them, from among the unbeliever, from among their behaviors and attitude and conduct and behavior, come out from among them, from among their ways of dressing and presenting of themselves, come out from among them and be ye separate, be unique. When you are separate, it means you are different from other people. It means you are unique from other people. It means you don't talk like them. You don't do things the way they do them. And God is saying, when you are like that, then you are acceptable unto God. But let me tell you, it, is, it may not be that easy. It's easier said than done. But the grace of God is more than sufficient for you. I said the grace of God is more than sufficient for you. Because when everybody is doing the same thing, and you are just alone, and you are just different from them, sometimes it can be tough and difficult, but understand one with God is in the majority. And the Lord will keep you company in Jesus' name. When we consecrate, another reason is for promotional purposes. It is a promotion from forgiveness unto perfection. When you consecrate yourself, when you consecrate yourself, uh, at salvation you get saved. You get saved. And then when you consecrate yourself, then you are elevated unto perfection. At salvation, your sins are forgiven. As salvation, you, you, you are redeemed from all that you have done wrong in the past. But at uh, consecration, you are reserved and preserved and they retained for holy, sacred, godly purposes alone. I thought I would get a better amen. amen. Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. Let's look at verses 1 through to 6 over there. Because some don't understand. I'm born again, I'm born again. Yes, what progress are you making? It says, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. Perfection. You can finish the rest of it by yourself. Let us go on to perfection. And that's what you're talking about, consecration. That you've been born again for 12 months, now one year. For 24 months, for 5 years, for 10 years, how is your life? Is there any difference between your life now and 10 years ago? Is there any difference between your life now and 20 years ago? Is there any difference between your life now and 2 years ago? Is there anything you can say, I am growing in grace? I am growing in the faith? Or you are just coming to church and then you are just saying the word of God and the word is doing nothing in you, the word will profit you. I said the word will profit you in the name of Jesus. And then when you are consecrated unto God, it qualifies you for a sacred service. Sacred service. That then means that you can be used of the Lord and you will be used by God every day of your life in the name of Jesus. I said you'll be used of God in the name of Jesus. And so make sure, make sure, you know, the Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah chapter 52 verse 11. Isaiah, it says, depart ye, depart ye. Go ye out from thence, touch no unclean thing. Go ye out of the midst of her, be ye clean, that bear the vessel of the Lord. When you are 
consecrated unto the Lord, then you are set apart for a holy use. Holy use. That means that you are special. You are dignified. You are honorable. You are acceptable unto God. Second Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter 2. I look at it from verses 20 and 21. It says, But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Your life will be unto honor. Your ministry will be unto honor. Your family will be unto honor. Your service will be unto honor. Your worship will be unto honor. Verse 21, if a man therefore purge himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified. Can you see it? A vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Pay attention here. I don't know about you, but in most homes and families, when you get there, there are some kitchen utensils that are always there that you put on fire all the time. There are some that uh, you use any time you want to eat, you get them, and then you just get the silverware, you get the plate, they are always there. Sometimes you leave them, on the, but then when a special guest comes, you have some silverware, you have some plates that are reserved. Where, where do you keep them? In the China cabinet. I don't know why they call it China. Amen? I don't know why they don't call it African cabinet or American cabinet. Anyway, China cabinet, you store them there. When a special person comes, you bring those things out. Listen to this. When you're a consecrated person, when the time comes for special service, you'll be remembered. When the time comes for dignifying service, you'll be remembered. Uh, don't you feel happy? I don't know about you. Just the opportunity I have to step up here, to stand before you, I consider it an honor that cannot and must not be taken for granted. And then you are a choir member. And then you take it just about singing. It is an honor for you to step up here. This is a holy place. And then you say, I am an usher, just for you to stand alone. You see, everybody is sitting down. Amen? I think the ushers are even sitting down right now. Amen. But then, while others are seated, you as an usher, you stand right there. And then you are saying, I am the representative of God here. I am the watchman of God over the heritage of the Lord. I am the one in charge of this very place. It is an honor. It is an honor. And then go back into the scripture. There are people that are called the scribes, the recorder. It is an honor to be in all those positions. To be a worker in the house of the Lord is not an easy thing. It is not something that should be taken lightly. So anything you are asked to do, lead prayer for five minutes. Unto whom are you praying? You are praying unto God. If you're not, that's why I say Depart ye, depart ye. Go ye from the midst of her. Touch no unclean thing. Be ye separate that bear the vessel of the Lord. The Lord will separate you. His grace will separate you. His power will separate you in Jesus' name. So then, to be consecrated is a mark of a Nazarite. The word Nazarite is also separation. It means when you are a Nazarite, it means that what the common people are doing, what the common people are eating, you cannot eat those things, you cannot do those things because you are a special person. A Nazarite, you, there are things they drink you cannot drink. There are places they go that you cannot go. There are ways they talk that you cannot talk because you are set aside and set apart for God and for his glory and that will prepare you for heaven in jesus name what are the resources we have understand it's not by power it's not by mind but by my spirit says the lord says the lord in order for us to be consecrated it is going to be a matter of our own personal decision you desire it 
you decide for it. God will not force anything on you. So, if I may put it this way, the number one resource you have is yourself. The willing power to be consecrated. The willing power to be separated. The willing power to be unique and special. You desire it. Before you went to school, that college, that university, before you got that degree, you desire to have it. You had a goal in mind. And if you're a child of God, you don't just say, I'm born again, I'm born again. You want to move up to or, 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 or higher on the ladder of faith and God will take you up higher and higher in Jesus' name. Once the desire is there. You know what the Bible say in the book of Mark, the book of Mark chapter 11. Let's quickly open our Bible there and see what the Lord say about desire. About desire. And as you desire this elevation, this promotion, this increase in your life, the Lord will give it unto you in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 11 verse 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, whatsoever things you desire, you desire sanctification, you get it. You desire uh, being set apart for holy use, you get it. Therefore, whatsoever you desire, holiness of life, you get when you pray. Believe that you receive them and ye shall have them in Jesus' name. So then, yourself is the number one tool resource that is near. Number two is the word of God. The word of God. Psalm 119 verse 11. It says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. You also need the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Uh, Hebrews chapter 13 verse 12. It says, Wherefore Jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood suffered within, uh, without the gate. Without the gate. Jesus paid his blood for this purpose. And the Bible tells us, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And the Lord will give us that victory as well in Jesus' name. I said that he will give, he will give us in Jesus' name. We need faith. We need faith. You, number one, you need yourself. Number two, you need the word of God. Number three, you need the blood of Jesus. Number four, you need faith in the Lord and his provision. Let's go back to that term, Mark where we read chapter 11. And now we look at it from verse 22. Verses 22 and 23. And Jesus answered said unto them, have faith in God. Tell somebody, have faith in God. Have faith in God. It is possible. For the fact that you have been rising and falling before does not mean that you cannot do it. You will get it in Jesus' name. It says, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, the mountain of sin in your life, the mountain of rising and falling, the mountain of lukewarmness, the mountain of stagnation, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he say. I need a better one. He shall have whatsoever he say. He shall have whatsoever he say. That means you are operating from a new level. A different level in Jesus' name. I get to the third point. The result of consecration. The result. We've seen the reason. We've seen the resources. We've now, we're now looking at the result. When you consecrate yourself. John chapter 16 verse 33. The result. These things I have spoken unto you. That in me you might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good shape. I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. You know, the songwriter says, Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. And I can tell you that because you're in Christ Jesus, you're victorious. In the name of Jesus, when you consecrate yourself unto God, no matter what is happening around you, there is going to be peace in the midst of the storms of life. Amen? Because you are consecrated, you say, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Is gain. Nothing will move you. Because you are 
of the Lord. And then you will understand, you know, sometimes ago, a, a brother um, was uh, in us. And then was scheduled to work on Sunday. And the brother went to the boss and said, I'm sorry, I cannot work on Sunday because of my faith. I have to be in church on Sunday. And the boss said, um, do you understand the nature of our work, that this is essential service? And uh, the brother said, yes, ma'am, I understand the boss was a lady. And said, what are you talking about then? We cannot close down uh, this facility. And he said, yes, I understand. And he said, but I cannot come on Sunday morning to work. And then the boss said, uh, uh, honey, it's like you are playing with your job. And then he looked at the boss eye to eye and said, ma'am, God gave me this job. If you take it away from me, God will give me another one. Peace was there that even if I lose this job, there is a better hope for me. And to cut a long story short, the boss was so mad and enraged. And that day they were supposed to have management meeting and the boss went there and presented uh, the case to them, uh, hoping that by the end of the day they would say, okay, um, you are fired. Like somebody always say, you are fired. You know who says that? All right, keep that to yourself. <laughs> Praise God. And then they finished the meeting and they came back and then they called him and said, hey, honey, you can have your Sunday. Yeah. Peace. But when you so fear the employer, when you so fear your finances, when you so fear your bank account, when you so fear the things around you more than God, God will allow you. Because those are the ones that matter to so you the most. God will allow you to keep that job, but you fill it up. When you consecrate yourself unto God, your priorities of life or in life will be set right. Your priorities will be set right. When you are really consecrated unto God, Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. When you are consecrated unto God, there will be privilege of divine nature. Privilege of divine nature. You have the nature of God. When God himself said, Be ye holy, for I, thy God, I am holy. Not just that. Look at 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Can you see there? As a child of God, you have great... No, no. He didn't just say... He said exceeding great and precious promises. That by this ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Having escaped, having been separated... From the corruption that is in the world through laws. When you are consecrated, you have a provincial approval and personal recognition by God. God approves your life. God recognizes you. And that's exactly what happened when Job was to be tempted. There is no Christian, no believer, no saint that will not be tempted. Te tried or tempted. And Job went to God. I mean, sorry, Satan went to God against Job. And God said, I know him. I know him. And then God was speaking on behalf of Abraham and God said, I know him. And God was speaking on behalf of David and God said, he's a man after my heart. And the rest of the people, when uh, uh, Saul was uh, converted and then uh, Cornelius was afraid, and God said unto Cornelius, I have called him and appointed him for a purpose. Your salvation is for a purpose. And that purpose will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. And then Peter was recognized and peace from among the twelve. And God, Jesus said unto me, 
Peter, um, lovest thou me more than this? Feed my lamb, feed my sheep, and feed my sheep. God recognize these people, he will recognize you. Amen. And then, when you are consecrated unto God, it gives you the opportunity to periodically examine yourself. Periodic self-examination. The Bible says, examine yourself and see how that Jesus Christ is in you. He says, know ye not your own selves, except ye be reprobates. It is when you are consecrated unto God, when you are set aside for God, that you have that time to examine yourself. That thing I said, how is it? That thing I did, how was it? That thing I wore, how was it? That place I... Did. And then you examine yourself and everything about you, and then it helps you, that consecration helps you to be persistent in the fellowship of the saints. They are always there. Nothing takes your time more than your time in the presence of God. You know the way David put it. He said, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord. For how long? For how long? I said, for how long? Forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. So shall it be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. When you are consecrated unto God, then personal evangelism will be your passion. It will be your passion because you have been saved. You know, in those days, when we gave our life to Christ, anywhere we went, we want to preach the gospel. You're on the bus, you want to preach the gospel. You're on the road, you want to preach the gospel. You're in the office, you want to preach the gospel. This time and age, I don't know the kind of salvation people are having anymore. That the word of God is so far from them. They're even ashamed of holding the Bible in, your, in their hand. And you know, some they even come to church this day, they don't come with their Bible. They come with that electronic thing that is acceptable to people. And what is that thing? Cell phone. Since everybody wants cell phone, everybody accepts cell phone, so it is cell phone. No. Do you have your Bible here today? I said, do you have your Bible here today? Yes. Can you raise it up and let us see? Can you wave it? Can you just wave it? As you are waving, the devil is unhappy with you. The devil is unhappy that you even have one that you call my Bible. Amen. Praise the Lord. Tell somebody to take it with you. Wherever you go, take it with you. And the Lord will keep you company and partner with you in Jesus' name. Personal evangelism. You know, what I discover is when people see you with the Bible, they automatically know that you are up to something. They automatically know you are a Christian. And then, one thing that happens to you personally is, there is that consciousness, when I say I'm a Christian, I carry the Bible, I must not do anything wrong. So, he becomes a watchman. Amen? You are conscious of it, but when you don't have the Bible, all you have is just cell phone. And you are not even able to tell people, I'm a child of God. Then, when you are trying to commit sin secretly, it will become very, very easy for you. But when your Bible is there, you will think ten times before you do that wrong thing. And the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. And then it will be easy for you to preach the gospel in season and out of season. Not that alone. You'll be, punct you'll be able to have a punctual studying of the Bible when you are consecrated unto God. Punctual studying of the word of God. And uh, you'll also be able to prove every spirit. Be able to prove every spirit because the spirit of God is working with you. It's in you. Is directing you, instructing you, and then you partner with God anywhere you go. You partner with God. That is the purpose of consecration. And that is what happened with Enoch. The Bible says Enoch walked with God. And he was not. He was not because God took him. We will walk with God this year. We will walk with God the rest of our life. In the name of Jesus. And this consecration we are talking about will give you power 
over the world. Power over the flesh. Power over the devil. Power over principalities and power. Power over sicknesses. And then it will prepare you for heaven. Consecration will help you to be holy, righteous, upright, all the days of your life. Shall we go before the Lord in prayer? Believers, consecration. Believers, consecration. Consecrate yourself to the Lord. Consecrate yourself to the Lord. Set yourself apart. Set yourself apart. Remember you are a saint. Remember you are holy. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Not the mundane things of this life. Consecration will help you to live a consistent Christian life. Daily walking with the Lord. Daily walking in the Lord. Daily walking for the Lord. Consecration will help you to have your friendship among other saints. The people of the world will no longer be your partner. You have the nature of God. He said, be ye holy for I, thy God, I am holy. Consecration will help you to have peace or follow peace with all men. But you know, without salvation, you cannot consecrate yourself. You must first of all be born again. You must first of all be in the will of God. You must first of all be a child of God. Consecration will direct the way you run your family, the way you run your business, the way you relate with other people, the way you behave, the way you are. When you are consecrated, then God will find you worthy, worthy to be used for his glory, worthy of acceptation because you are free from the addictions of the world. You are free from the allurement of the world. You are free from the pressure of the society. You are free from every ungodly satanic influences. The Lord will keep you. The Lord will help you. The Lord will preserve you. The Lord will hold you to the very end in Jesus' name. This is your day. This is your hour. Do not live here the same way you came. Be a better person. Be a new person. Be a transformed person. Let God be seen in you. All, all to Jesus, I consecrate anew. He is my portion forever. He is my portion forever. Take, take the world with all its gilded toys. Mine is a word. No moth or rot will destroy. Are you for Jesus? Is Jesus for you? Call upon the Lord. Now is the accepted time. Today is your day of salvation. Mm -hmm.